Volunteers monitor hundreds of streams across Minnesota, ranging from large rivers to flowing ditches and everything in between. To qualify for the Citizen Stream Monitoring Program, your stream does have to flow year-round. You'll start by picking your sampling location using the site selection information in the Citizen Stream Monitoring Manual. This is a single site that you'll sample at least once a week from April through September and after significant storms. Preferably, each sample will be taken at the same time of day. To start, you'll need to fill out your site information sheet so the Pollution Control Agency knows where you're sampling. Just follow the instructions in your monitoring manual and on the site information sheet. To do your sampling, you'll need monitoring equipment. When you join the program, you'll receive a SECI tube, a stream data sheet, laminated sampling instructions, and detailed instructions as part of your monitoring kit. You'll also need a bucket and rope system, a safety vest if you're sampling from a bridge on a road, and any other necessary safety gear, such as a personal flotation device. If you choose to do optional rainfall, temperature, and photo monitoring, you'll also need a rain gauge, a thermometer, and a digital camera. Information on how to obtain a rain gauge and a field thermometer can be found in the CSMP instruction manual. Once you've gathered your supplies, you're ready to start monitoring. The first thing to do when you arrive at your sampling location is to record an appearance and recreational suitability rating for your site. Do this before taking any transparency readings so that your personal observation isn't biased by the sampling results. Don't consider the weather when rating appearance or recreational suitability. Record the number that best describes the appearance of the stream within one meter of your sampling site. Rank it on a scale from one to five. 1A is clear water. 1B is tea-colored, transparent water that has been stained by organic matter in upstream bogs or wetlands. 2 is cloudy white, gray, or brown. 3 is muddy with a cloudy brown color from high sediments. 4 is green from algae growth. 5 is muddy and green from sediments and algae growth. After recording your rating of the appearance, look at the stream again and consider its recreational suitability. Keep in mind that this is intended to be your personal judgment. You'll rate recreational suitability on a five-step scale from very good to very poor. Very good means a stream is beautiful. It couldn't be better. Good is minor aesthetic or appearance problems, but still excellent for swimming and boating. Fair means swimming and appearance are slightly impaired. Poor is greatly reduced enjoyment and no swimming, though boating is still okay. Very poor is when recreation and enjoyment of the stream's appearance is nearly impossible. Remember, even if a stream is not suitable for fishing, boating, or swimming because it's small, it's still important to rank the stream for aesthetic enjoyment. Write this ranking on your stream data sheet, and you've completed this step of your monitoring. In order to take a transparency reading on your stream, you'll use a SECI tube. Start by preparing the tube. Pull up the inside string to remove the black and white SECI disc from the tube. Then set the tube aside while you collect the water sample. You'll need a rope and bucket system to collect this sample. You can easily make one by attaching a threaded connector or quick link connector to the handle of a plastic bucket or ice cream bucket that has been cleaned. Next, tie one end of a strong, durable rope to the connector. A braided polyester rope will be easier to hoist than a nylon rope, which tends to fray and can cut and burn your hands. Make sure the rope is long enough to reach midstream and mid-depth from the bridge or stream bank where you'll be monitoring. If you need a particularly long rope for your sampling location, you might want to tie it to a reel so that you can roll up the rope as you pull in the bucket. You'll want to collect your sample from the middle of the stream, if possible. 
If you're sampling from the stream bank, hold the rope and throw your bucket in the water, aiming at a spot that is midstream. Let the bucket sink so that it is about mid-depth before you pull it in. Take care not to scrape the bucket across the stream bottom because you don't want to collect sediments with your sample. You also want to avoid collecting materials that are floating on the surface. If you are sampling from a bridge or culvert, lower your bucket on the rope into the stream about mid-depth. When you pull the bucket up, be careful not to bounce the rope or bucket across the side of the bridge or culvert to avoid knocking debris into your sample. Then swirl the sample to keep solids from settling to the bottom. When everything is well mixed, pour water from the bucket into the Secchi tube until it's full. You'll want to take these readings in the open, but out of direct sunlight, so turn your back to the sun to shade the sample. Before you take any readings, remove your sunglasses. They can affect the accuracy of your observations. If you have photogradient prescription lenses, you can keep them from darkening by wearing a wide-brimmed hat. After filling the Secchi tube with your water sample, let the water level drain down to the zero mark on the tape measure. You might have to shake the tube a bit to get the water to start draining out of the side drain hole. Next, slowly lower the Secchi disc down the tube while you look down the tube from the top. Watch for the disc to disappear from sight. When it does, stop lowering the disc. While you continue to look down the top of the tube, slowly pull the string to raise the disc until it reappears. Lower and raise the disc as many times as needed until you feel confident that you have found the midpoint between where the disc disappears and reappears. With the disc at this midpoint, pinch the string against the side of the tube to hold the disc at this depth. Now look at the side of the tube and sight across the top of the disc to see the closest centimeter mark on the tape. Write down this depth to the nearest centimeter on your stream data sheet in the column labeled Secchi Tube Depth. If the disc does not disappear and you can see it sitting on the bottom of the tube, just record greater than 100 for the transparency measurement on your stream data sheet. Of course, if, for any reason, it is unsafe to take a sample, just record your observations of appearance, recreational suitability, and estimate stream stage instead. In addition to doing your weekly stream sampling, you should take measurements for two or three days after a significant rainfall, if possible. Monitoring after a rainfall is important because it lets you detect if precipitation and runoff are changing the condition of the stream. When you sample after a rain event, be sure to mark yes on the stream data sheet where it asks if this was a rain event. If you take stream measurements for several days after rainfall, be sure that each day you mark yes to show that you're sampling because of a rain event. When you're just doing your weekly stream measurements, be sure to mark no on the stream data sheet where it asks if this was a rain event. Each time you sample, you need to make a rough visual estimate of the stream stage, which is the water level of the stream. This information is important because it helps us understand and interpret changes in your transparency readings over time. If the stream channel is completely dry, record the stream level as D for dry. If the stream had pools or puddles of water that are not flowing, record the stream level as Z for no flow. If the water covers one-third or less of the depth from the stream bottom to the top of the stream bank, record the stream level as L for low. If it covers one-third to two-thirds the depth, record it as N for normal. If the water covers more than two-thirds of the depth from the stream bed to the stream bank, record it as H for high. 
Also, record it as high if it is flooding over its banks. Tracking daily rainfall as you do your stream monitoring helps you to understand the influence of rainfall runoff on your stream. Rainfall data is valuable information used by meteorologists, hydrologists, emergency managers, and anyone interested in daily rainfall amounts. The Citizen Stream Monitoring Program partners with the National Network to coordinate daily rainfall monitoring. This is the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. If you want to monitor rainfall along with your stream monitoring, you'll need to formally enroll with this organization. Details on how to enroll are in your Citizen Stream Monitoring Program Manual. If you want to, you can also take temperature readings on your river or stream. This is particularly important on trout streams where trout need cool water temperatures to survive. Use a thermometer that doesn't contain mercury. Then, if it were to break, it wouldn't put mercury contamination into the stream. When possible, take temperature readings by holding your thermometer directly in the stream for two minutes. Write the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit on your stream data sheet. If you can't put the thermometer directly into the stream, Collect a bucket of water from the deepest and fastest flowing part of the stream. Stir your thermometer in the water sample for two minutes immediately after it's drawn. Write down the temperature reading in degrees Fahrenheit on your stream data sheet. You also have the option to do photo monitoring of your sampling site. Taking digital photographs of the stream under a variety of conditions is another way of documenting changes at your site over time. If you take a photo, write picture in the comments field on your stream data sheet on the date the picture was taken. Include a note about any unusual conditions when the photo was taken, such as extreme weather, construction near the stream, changes in land use, or a dramatic change in the water's appearance. Put a file name on the digital photo when you download it. In the photo's file name, include the date and the site number used by the Citizen Stream Monitoring Program. At the end of the monitoring season, email these electronic photos to the Citizen Stream Monitoring Program at csmp.pca at state.mn.us. You can send the photo files on a compact disk or as printed photographs if you wish. Include them with your completed stream data sheet at the end of the monitoring season. Be sure to put the date and the site number on the photo files or on the printed photographs.